Hi guys, Squirrel here. I'm at the Flight Sim Expo in Orlando, Florida. It is warm and humid outside, but inside it's nice and chill. This thing is getting bigger and better every year. We've got Navigraph, Orbex, Virtual Flight, lots of big names that you probably know, plus lots of little independent vendors. So I'm gonna go around the show. We're gonna have a chat with people, have a look at their equipment, what they're doing, what they're up to, what's new in the Flight Sim community, and I hope you enjoy the video. Right, I'm here with uh, Nikki. There's some uh, honeycomb flight simulations. Isn't yeah, honeycomb yeah. aeronautical. Honeycomb aeronautical. And uh, you've probably already heard about this. It's, there's a lot of a lot of hype around this one. But honeycomb are making a brand new yoke and a throttle. And uh, I'm just going to chat with Nikki now about that. So, when do you think the throttle, so the yoke, might actually come out? So we're in production right now. We're doing a pilot run. And right out of that, we go into mass production, which means we have a delivery schedule from a factory partner of August 13th. Okay. All pre-orders on our website, which is going live mid next week on flyhoneycomb.com, right. will ship directly from the factory. So mid-August, we'll ship to our customers, and it will be at a reduced price point of 220, which is our pre-order price. And then after launch, it'll go up to 249, which is the normal MSRP. So there's a saving and you get it about four weeks before anybody else. All right. So yeah, about four or five weeks from now we'll be shipping to customers. So what was the what was the design vision behind the honeycomb? What what were you trying to do in the market? You saw what was there, you approached it and thought, we we're gonna do something better. So what was yeah. the vision? So Back in the day when I first had the idea for Honeycomb, I was running SciTech in North America. Okay. And SciTech was owned by a video game company and they really didn't understand the sim market or the simmer. They were just selling boxes. Yeah. And so I want to create something that was of high quality but at an aggressive price point where everybody was able to afford it. And you know, everybody can make a thousand dollar yoke that's great, but it's really, really difficult to make a two hundred and fifty dollar yoke yeah, that's right. great. So Finding the funding, the right timing, took me a couple of years. So we started the development process in 2016. And then I'm not a mechanical engineer, I'm not an industrial designer, I just had a vision and an idea of what I wanted to do. So I partnered up with different people that were experts in their area. So for the mechanical movement, mm -hmm. we uh, worked with Precision Flight Controls, which makes high-end FAA approved simulators. Okay. And they designed the mechanical movement for us. And then for the industrial design, I had an idea that I wanted to create something that was small enough to identify as a general aviation yoke, but big enough that you could identify as a commercial airliner yoke as well. So it's kind of a hybrid in between, okay. which makes some compromises, but I wanted no matter what you fly, that you could identify as yourself with it and that would be a, a, you know, a, a, a design that you would want. But then also the ergonomics, we set with clay models and set, because simmers and student pilots hold on to a yoke differently. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, so we wanted to have the ergonomics of the student pilots with the three finger touch, yeah. but also the typical two hand uh, simmer, the way they hold the yoke, so the ergonomics works for both of them. That took a long time to kind of dial that right. in. Right. So three years into development, but now we're here. Um, we, we've been doing rigorous testing on quality. We have to, we give a five year warranty. Five year warranty, five -year that's warranty. amazing. And um, the, um, the tension uh, system in the, uh, in the yoke is not spring-loaded because metal has fatigue and it gives you this unlinear feel. So we're using something similar to a bungee cord okay. because it has much longer longevity and also uh, it doesn't have that metallic feel that right. spring-loading has. And we give lifetime replacements on the bungee cord. So if you own that yoke for 15, 20 years and one of the bungees goes to call us up and send us a free to you. Gotcha, that's awesome. Yeah. So the yoke is available from, well, it'll mid be August. releasing in mid-August. Yeah. And then you've got the throttle coming, uh, is it later in the year or the end of the start of next year? So this is estimates because right. we, we just I just approved the tooling for it. Okay. Making an injection tool takes about two months. Right. The tool costs over 200 grand. So well. it's like it's <laughs> a serious investment. Uh, so we've got to get it right before yeah. we approve it. That's taking a little bit of time. I still need to fine tune the feel of the throttle okay. handles. Some of the feedback on the show are going to go back and are going to do some design changes. Yeah. For example, our feedback was that the commercial end, so it comes with general aviation, turboprop, and commercial handles. And one of the feedbacks from the community was they felt they, uh, that the uh, commercial handles were a little too small. So I'm going to go back and have them redesigned, make them a little bigger. Uh, it's not going to cost uh, so an awful delay, right but... No, you're just I, trying I, I to refine it, it now, yeah. yeah. Okay. And also, the tension on the levers, I think there's some bit of fine tuning. But I can do that while the tooling's being made. Okay. 
So I'm hoping I'll have first off tooling samples ready uh, in September. Then you got the fine tuning done. Hopefully December, maybe January, right around that time point. But you know, I'm not gonna promise anything because if it's not right, I'm not gonna rush it to market. Right, yeah, that's, so that's fair. it's like if yeah. it takes a few weeks later, that's just how it is. Yeah, that's fair. So designed to run on P3D, X Plane, DCS. Yes, yeah. everything. So it's both products are recognized as human interface devices, so it's basically a gaming controller. Right. But Aerosoft is our partner in Europe and they're writing all the drivers. And we're partnering with X Plane and Aerofly. So in X Plane and Aerofly, the drivers will be native you just plug it in, it's instantly recognized and pre programmed for everything. Okay. Um, for P3D and Flight Sim X, Aerosoft is writing the drivers. What they're doing is they're not only writing these really nice driver software, they're also running a program in the background that works with all the, um, the airplane developers, So because everybody has different protocols. So they put all the different protocols into that program that runs in the background, and whenever people load a new program from, a new, from another developer, it goes in and converts, so you don't have to program anything right. yourself. Oh, no, that's clever. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty clever. I didn't come up with that. That's Aerosoft. Yeah, yeah. So thanks for that. No, that's great. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, really great products. Um, quality is definitely there, I think, but your price point's really aggressive. So I guess you're aiming it at the sort of not not even home cockpit market, but the sort of just the, the everyday user, really. I guess everyday flight simulator who just wants a quality. Uh, yoke and throttle. Yeah, no, no, we're going, we're mass market. This is what we're going on. When you do stuff like injection tooling and, you know, you you, to, to, you have to have scale of commerce to be able to right. throw that back. That's why you see most of the yokes that are in the, you know, thousand dollars up are usually made of really nice aluminum pieces because you don't need tooling to do that right. because you don't have the volume. Yeah. So we got, we're going at, and we're, we're not interested in taking their business away. We're going after Cytec, we're going after CH, that's our market. Yeah, that was great. Thank yeah. you very very much for your time. Thank you. And uh, best of luck with all the launch and stuff. Yeah. I look forward to seeing how it actually flies. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah. Right, I'm here with Tyler. Uh, he's from Noble Flight Simulation. They make a bunch of products for flight simulators. Tyler, do you want to take me through what products you make? Yeah, sure. So we um, specialize in the Garmin line of G1000. Um, we also have a, a Garmin G1000 Cirrus Perspective model. Um, so what we have over here is our primary um, G1000 model. It's a fully backlit, both the buttons and the bezels. Nice. And a new feature that we also just added is the buttons and bezels, the backlighting is actually dimmable. So people that want to actually put that into a cockpit at night, you can hook it up to a potentiometer here and I can show you real quick that the buttons will dim so that you can actually get the, um, the backlighting to the uh, appropriate brightness that you want. So that's a really nice feature. Um, are these things built to like sit on the table like this or are they more built to sit inside of a cockpit? Either or. We sell it both ways. So it can come with this um, nice 16 gauge sheet metal um, stand. It's very high quality um, and it's heavy enough that it doesn't move when you try to push it so you can push the buttons and it doesn't want to tip over. Um, so you can buy it either as a standalone panel um, or if you're a, a home cockpit builder and you actually want to make it and put it into your own cockpit, we do sell the units individually. So either one is, is perfectly fine. And if you just wanted to buy one, do you make like a stand just for a single or do you need to have both? So we don't sell just one or the other. Um, there's a, a main motherboard that everything is connected into. Right. You know, so there's only one set of connections yeah. or only one USB, so it's not all independent. Okay. However, if somebody really just wanted to buy one, you could do that, but you wouldn't be able to add a second one later. Gotcha. And so we, we don't really have too much. So you buy the whole thing, one USB and your PC. Yep. Compatibility with? Compatibility, as is right now, this is compatible with P3D running um, Mindstar software, or it's a stock, or compatible with X-Plane using that. Now the real exciting news that we're actually telling everybody, and this is kind of the big, the big thing we're telling, is we're actually in the final stages of developing our own G1000 software. Um, we're building this from the ground up to be 100% realistic. So as well as just a home cockpit, you could, you know, you could use it as a learning tool oh, exactly. to learn your way around the G1000. Exactly, because um, what we, you know, what we tell everybody is that the, uh, in order to get the most fidelity out of your cockpit simulator is it really needs to be uh, as realistic as possible. So we're, like I said, we're building it from scratch to meet that goal. So briefly here, this is our, our standard G1000. We offer it in a, diff a varying degree of autopilots. So this is the GDU 1040 that doesn't have the integrated GFC 700. This is the GDU 1042. So this is more of a Diamond or Columbia or a Mooney type autopilot yep. configuration. 
this is the most popular, what we call the GDU 1044B. This is for the Cessna Nav 3. Okay. So this is the most common. Most most G1000 manufacturers will really only to offer this one. Yeah. Um, and then we also offer the GDU 1045. This is for our Beechcraft pilots. So for the Baron, okay. the, um, the Bonanza, those aircraft. Yeah. Um, but if you want to see this, so this is the last one. This is our Cirrus Perspective. We're pretty much the only manufacturer that offers a Cirrus Perspective that has the full 12.1 inch displays not just a standard G1000 with the keypad. It has the Cirrus style knob configuration, so you don't have all the extra knobs of the G1000 because in the real Cirrus, all you have is a very limited number of knobs on the bezel, gotcha. but then you have your Cirrus GCU pad down here. Yeah. Um, and so that obviously has the keypad, and so this also is gonna be running with our proprietary G1000 software for the ultra-realistic experience. It's amazing the depth of detail you've gone to here. Really nice looking kit as well. Thank you very much. It also, they all come, all the panels come with a, a mounting pattern for a, a RAM iPad mount. So oh, if you want really nice. So if you want to just buy a RAM iPad mount, it just bolts right on here to the side so that you can do that. I've got That's, those RAM mounts in my, yeah, in my plane. it's great. <laughs> I was like, I was thinking about designing my own and I was like, you know, I'll just put a place for somebody to use a RAM. You can't, they're so you good. can't beat a RAM. <laughs> no, they're so good. So, but no, we're very, very excited about it. Specifically, our hardware's been out for a while, but we're yeah. extremely excited about the upcoming software release that we have because that's really going to, um, it's really going to take our hardware to the next level because it's truly plug and play. You just load our software, you plug it in, and you go. There's no configuration file, there's no fuss, it just works. Awesome. Well, Tyler, thank you very oh, much. Oh, thank your time. you very much. You have a great time. Right, so I'm here with Jason. He's from Infinite Flight. Uh, Infinite Flight is a, a mobile uh, flight sim package which Jason's going to take us through now. Yeah. So I, I mostly fly desktop, so what's the big difference here? Yeah, so uh, as you can see, we're, uh, Infinite Flight runs on a mobile device, so when you're flying, we're on autopilot here, but when you're flying, you, you use the device as your yoke. Okay. Um, this, is the, this is our newest aircraft. We're just about to release it. Uh, so here at Flight Sim Expo, it's not released yet, but this is the preview. Um, for the first time, we have uh, live instruments. Um, and this, this X-Cub actually comes with the uh, G1000, uh, the G, I think that's a G3X. This is, uh, we, can, we can change the heading here and you can see okay. so we're in a turn. So that's, that's what makes us unique in addition to the fact that um, we have uh, global flight. So we have the entire Earth. Um, you can plan, plan uh, flight plans. We have waypoints. Um, so if you if you plan a flight out, um, I don't know, sim brief or something like that, you can then put it into here. Yes, and actually we have one of our community members helping with the booth this weekend, yeah. who has a website called um, fpl2if.com, and you can uh, go to that, paste in a flight aware flight plan, right. and it will decode it uh, or encode it for infinite flight. You paste it into your search, and it plots your whole flight plan. Nice. Uh, okay. So you can copy real real world flights in that way. Um, the other thing that makes us unique as well is we have, um, as you can see up here, we've got multiplayer and ATC. Okay, so, so how does that work? Right, so instead of focusing on uh, exact cockpit buttons and screens first, we focused on this and, and it's a, it can be a lot to ask of a mobile device. Yeah. Um, so the way mobile uh, global works is we, uh, we have three servers. We've got the, if you have an Infinite Flight Pro subscription, you have access to the entire globe and all aircraft, all liveries, everything. And the way it works is you uh, spawn into one of our servers. We have the casual server, so you can fly upside down in a 747 through right. an airspace, nobody yeah. cares. Yeah. Uh, we've got the training server, so you can get your hand, uh, feet wet with ATC. Okay. Our ATC works by, this is in solo mode, so I can't show you that right now, but the ATC has a list of commands on screen. Yeah. We have uh, actual people controlling, um, so you'll be communicating with someone who might be on the other side of the world that's controlling. And then our expert server, uh, we have vetted ATC. Uh, so we have about 600, uh, sorry, yeah, 600 and some um, expert server air traffic controllers that are uh, going 24 seven. And we, we usually have a schedule that, uh, where they open certain hubs. Yeah, okay. uh, So that pilots know what to expect. And you can go to our community forum, which is community.infiniteflight.com. And then you'll see in our announcement category where ATC are, uh, some suggested routes that you can fly, uh, and so on and so on. We do an event every Friday where it's, uh, our servers are packed and people are flying in. Uh, you might have a queue on the ground waiting for takeoff for 40 minutes before you fly. Okay. You might have a gate hold, uh, and it gets really busy. 
So for anybody that's like flown on a desktop where they've got you know a joystick and yep. maybe some rudder pedals, how how difficult is the transition to a mobile platform like that? The differentiator here isn't that we're, we're not competing with the mobile or the uh, desktop sims. Yeah, we are an extension of that, so that uh, when you're on the go, you know you don't bring your PC to Flight Sim Expo. But just over at the tables here yesterday, we had a whole group of our community right. flying and controlling. But and they can do it here. together on multiplayer. Together on multiplayer. So presumably if you like, you know, plug in your sort of normal tablet headset, you've then got, you can talk and communicate back to ATC. We don't do voice. Flying. You don't do voice, right. So we it's don't all do done voice. in the- It's the, all done in, the, in, the in our uh, 2D UI. So gotcha. there would be, if we were, uh, there would be a little headset right here. Yeah. It will flash uh, yellow. Yeah. When uh, or orange when um, you have a communication. So if you didn't hear it for some reason, you'll see it, tap on it, and it'll tell you what was said. And then you respond with a set list of commands. So if they're telling you to hold short, there's really only one thing you can say. Mm -hmm. You can say, yeah, I'm holding short. Okay, got you, just confirmatory messages. Right, yeah. it, now if you're flying the approach and the approach controller tells you to turn uh, left heading 040 and that vectors you into a mountain, you can say unable yeah. or you can say, you know, Turning left, heading 040. Okay. That's, that's, sounds really cool. It's fun. It's good so this, this is available on presumably on Android and iOS? And iOS, yeah. Yeah, just available in the App Store and the Google Store and that kind of thing? Both App Store, yep. Uh, Google Play Store, App Store. Um, in US dollars, you're looking at um, $5.99 uh, for the app. Yeah. And then our pricing model is, um, and now it varies by country and taxes and all of that kind of stuff. Um, but for $80 a year, you can have our pro subscription. Uh, if you want to try it out, you pay 10 bucks for a month and um, there's discount, you know, you, you, you don't pay that full amount for a year, you get a discount. Gotcha, yeah. So all the scenery is just basically built in? All the scenery is built in. Yeah. Um, we will, by the, probably by the end of, by mid, mid to late summer, we're gonna have um, the, uh, the 15 meter per pixel on the entire globe. Wow. Okay. Um, so like you can see, you'll be able to see landmarks and things like that. Because it's 15 meter per pixel, it looks better at cruise than it does down low. So you tilt it left and right. Yep, so there's my, and there's pitch my pitch. up and down. Yep, and you can see there's a little bit of G-force, like the cockpit uh, camera. Yeah. Is a little bit, little bit of lag as we move around like that. Okay. Not lag, but like there's a, yeah. you know, as if you were a person sitting in there. And so how do you operate the rudder pedal? So the rudder's right here. Okay. So I can do my coordinated turns. Yeah, okay. Right there. Um, you can side slip this thing in. The physics are, are very true to life. They've been they've been tested by X Cub pilots. And how many um, different aircraft are, are available? Fifty, and 50. hundreds of liveries. Now some of these are older models, like the 717 needs a rework. And you know as we as we as our technology advances, like a live cockpit, 717 is not yes. ready for a live cockpit. Yet. Right. You know? So it go back. And so it'll have to be. Yeah. yeah, we're going to redo the seven, the 777. That's a very highly requested rework. Yeah. We'll give it wing flex, a new model, new cockpit, live, live cockpit, all that okay. kind of stuff. You know, making progress. Yeah. No, that's cool. All right. Yeah. So there you go, guys. If uh, if you want to do some flight simming whilst you're mobile, you know, perhaps sit on a 747 and fly along. That's it. Infinite flight. Thank you very much, Jason. Yeah, my pleasure. Okay. I'm here with Kyle. Yep. Hi. I'm Kyle. From PropWash Simula Prop Simulations. PropWash yeah. Simulation. And they yes. do like radio panels and garments and things like this that you can plug into our sim. Yes. Kyle, can you just give us a very quick overview of the kind of things that you make? Uh, all of our panels are, uh, are for radios. They work uh, with X-Plane. Our radio panels are X-Plane only at this point. We are um, working on the P3D and FSX. Hopefully by the end of the year we'll have uh, connectivity with all. Uh, it's plug and play. We also have DIY uh, equipment, parts and pieces, uh, and full panels. Is this so, for P3D, X-Plane? Uh, the, the DIY can be for all. Uh, our plug and play is strictly uh, X-Plane on the radio panels, and the GPSs will do P3D or X-Plane. And by the end of the year, we should have connectivity for all. Are they uh, are these all very different, slightly different models? These these actually are all programmed the same. Yeah. And um, they have different faceplates, but you can actually put the nav on the com or the transponder on the com. Okay. All that works. Um, our autopilot is uh, connectable with X plane only at this point also, and it models the CAP uh, 140 KAP 140 by King. Our uh, encoder panel here will do the OBSs, the VORs, a heading bug, a couple other things. 
and with that, uh, this will work with P3D um, or FSX okay. as an HID device. And our switch panel is the same, it's also an HID device. You can connect it as a joystick. These go right through our plug-in with X-Plane. Make it very simple. Yeah. This is strictly HID for, for all platforms. Our radio panels, um, though you can get different face plates, the radio panels will do any of the transponder, ADF, ground speeds, whatever you like on that. Our GPS is uh, the same, it'll work on, across all platforms and is uh, plug and play with our plug-in for X-Plane. Works really nice. Okay, and what, what model of, uh, is this, it simulating uh, like simulates a Garmin? This simulates a GNS530. Okay, 530. Uh, yep. Is that the, the highest sort of Garmin model you do? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Well, no, we do the GTN750 too. Oh, we just come out with well. that too. Oh, nice. And okay. this is uh, across all flight simulators also. Yeah, and, and if if any of the viewers want to buy these things, where's the best place? Uh, online at propwashsim.com. Okay, awesome. Propwashsim.com, propwash simulations, guys, bunch of radio panels and garments for the B3D and x -Play. Oh, thank you very much. All right, I'm with Oscar. You probably remember this guy from the virtual fly videos I did. Hi there. I We're at the there. expo. He's back. He's got loads of stuff. Uh, anything new in the world of virtual fly? We have some new stuff. Yeah. We do have. Uh, we have the same flight controls, but now the Plus series. Uh, so basically, that uh, adding the common changes that we added the whole effect magnetic contactless sensors to all of them. Right. Started uh, the TK6, and now we have the TK6 Plus. Then the rudder, rudder plus. So that plus series is whole effect sensors adding, and we also have the Yoko plus, yeah. which is you uh, plus everything. Then we've plus everything, <laughs> which is adding. Apart from the contactless sensors, we added a uh, eight-way hat switch, as well as full new inter internal wiring, and uh, better resolution, 12 bit, 1496 values resolution. And then also uh, new products, for example, the G1000, desktop G1000, AATD, we have now two certified FAA simulators. Wow. And uh, new on top duos as well as the ones you tried when you came to Barcelona. Yeah. So uh, those are the same, but we, we always go one step, you know, uh, yeah. step up. So for example, now we have a back cover, yeah. which we didn't have, okay. uh, different cockpit configurations, and yeah. You uh, didn't bring a full motion sim. We I'm, didn't. I'm I know. It, it didn't go through the doors. <laughs> that, that's why we didn't. But actually, we, 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 we had an idea of bringing it. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it's a, a bit of a, of a hustle. So we brought the static simulators. Yeah. We brought the touch screens, G1000s. Maybe next year we'll bring the Ontem Duo. So we can start from the Sono Pro A. This is uh, one of our certified AATD simulators that we have. Uh, in this case, these, this one and the other one are the same cockpit, Cessna 172 and 182 uh, flight panels, but one is analog yeah, and okay. one is G1000. And just to clarify, when you buy this, do you get everything that you see there so, uh, in the can, unit? Exactly, you can buy uh, all the complete setup, yeah, yeah. but you can buy it also separate. So you have the Solo 8 flight panel, which I think you tried when you came to Barcelona. Yes. Yeah. Um, you can buy it uh, apart with the Yoko, the TPM, but then again, if you want, for example, an iOS station for flight schools, or if you want the, the, the visuals, PCs, etc., you just add everything, you okay. know? And that's what we do with all our products. We personalize them, so yeah. you start off, you can start off with a Yoko, if you want. Yeah. With, at your home, you start off with a Yoko, your TK6, then you add a flight panel, then you add the visuals, etc., etc., and then okay. you move up. Yeah, that's good, so you got to build it up as you go along. Exactly. Yeah, cool. Just to clarify for the viewers, yeah. when you say it's certified, what does that mean? So certified for, uh, the, uh, for the FAA as an AATD basically means that you can count hours on your logbook. So for example, towards your instrument uh, rating, I think it's around 20 hours that you can count. Yeah. So uh, you are a pilot, for example, yeah. in this case, in, well, your, your license is IASA. But if you were in, in, the, sta in the States yeah. and you want to do the uh, instrument rating, there's 20, up to 20 hours that you can do here. And you can also, that's something uh, very interesting and new that came up not long ago, you can validate and renew your uh, instrument. Oh, really? On, on one of those? On things? one of these. Oh, I didn't know that. So yeah. that's, uh, I, th I mean, that's something that has changed uh, for many pilots who yeah. have instruments, as well as PPL, you can do some hours there. And that's very good for flight schools, very yeah. good for 
pilots as well. They just buy that, they know it's certified, they know exactly. they can put the students on it. Yeah. And now we are certifying as well for EASA. So uh, you have an EASA license, yeah. right? Uh, which means that you can also use this uh, for, for... That's cool. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, yeah. So, Paul, in this case, we have the Solo GA. Uh, I think, I don't know if you remember when we were in Spain, uh, you flew a touch screen. I remember, so, a big touch screen. So in this case, this touch screen is a version of the Solo Airliner. Okay, as you know, uh, the touch you can change from different panels, single engine piston, twin engine piston, turboprop, and uh, Boeing 737. But in this case, that's a solar airliner. So what we've done is we've taken a professional product like that. And uh, for the half of the cost, we have a enthusiast one, which is this new one. And it's all with general aviation. So it's a complete GA focus. So if you love GA flying, yeah. one of these panels with a Yoko down there and a throttle, which we'll have a look at in a second. Exactly. So it, it's, it, you can buy it apart. In theory, the, the only thing that comes is the solo GA, then you can you can get the Yoko, yeah. the TQ6, the TPM, and you have everything, right? So you have here you have more than eight types of panels, you know, generic turbo prop, for example, here. Yeah, so I remember being that you can put it into different modes for different yeah. aircraft. Going exactly. Yeah, exactly. So this is the uh, the low low cost uh, community enthusiast product, which is uh, for B3D, FSX, and X plane. And then we have the professional one, which is a bit more complete. Uh, here you have as well the radio stack. Okay. Uh, so the, the solo GA and solo airliner, and solo airliner radio stack, the physical radio stack, are the three touch screens that we have. Gotcha. And this is the first prototype. So if you took this yeah. and then took like a super widescreen monitor and just put it here, you'd have a really nice, relatively inexpensive cockpit. It would be uh, like the cockpit that you could have at home yeah. with different, you know, modules and everything. Yeah. It would be that, but all complete. Yeah. Because you know you, you can change uh, different configurations. You can use all the airbase that you have here. So that would be the Cessna 172, 182, Moody Bravo. Yeah. B58, generic piston, turbo prop, single and twin engine. That's a nice setup. It's a, it's, a, it's a great product for uh, for the for the enthusiast. Yeah. And then if you wanted a bit more professional, we have the same, but uh, the airliner which has a bit more uh, configurations plus the Boeing 737. Yeah. That you I, you you actually flew it in a motion platform. Yes, you remember? I yes, I remember. So this is one of the new, and here you have the flight controls as always. So. The TQ6 Plus in this case, you know so this, it. So this is the uh, the three, and that's the six. Yeah. So that's the, the the baby brother to this one. Exactly. So if you just like GA top stuff, you've got your your throttle mixture and prop. Um, with this, you've got the like, same thing but twice the configuration. Exactly. But this is the plus model, isn't it? This is the plus model. So the only the, the only change, uh, you have the TQ6, right? Yeah. So the change is, in this case, the TQ6 goes with potentiometers, yeah. which are extremely efficient, and they, but we wanted to go a step, a step further, and we created the flight controls with the whole effect sensors. Yeah. So that magnetic, magnetic contactless right. makes it like a light lifetime. So it's to do with the way that it senses movement. Exactly. It uses magnetic sensors. Yeah, exactly. So what's T this? TPM Bernio. So, okay. you know, all our flight controls have these kind of strange, uh, weird names. Yeah. So the Yoko, the Rudo, the T uh, and now it's the Vernier. Okay. So we did Vernier, we got into Vernier type. So, uh, have you flown aircraft with a Vernier type? Yes. So you, go, you, you, you have in this case, the here you have the throttle with the, yeah. the friction mode here. And this is the Vernier type for Cessnas. Right. For uh, Bonanzas, yeah. you have if you want to do it. So quick, I find quick the one, cycle. I find 172, so I don't have this. So the one exactly the one. The 172 has both. Yeah. The one, the 182 we flew has these ones. And uh, that's the first TPM uh, from scratch. The same 182 that we flew, we, we, we took it exactly the same uh, Echo Charlie kilos per Quebec, I think it was. We flew it to Igualada, to the airfield. We spent a month there. Uh, Studying this and studying the G1000, and okay. we, we did exactly the same same configuration, the same forces. And so you could take this and put it in that setup. Yeah. Um, or you could use the throttle setup. Exactly. Whatever your style. Yeah. And the G1000 is the, the newest as well, one of the newest products. Okay. So this is from scratch. Uh, we we create 
We wanted to create the same touch and, and feel for the rotaries and the, and the buttons. As you can see here we have COM1 active and it's here active. If I want COM2, we'll go back here. The same, yeah, I want to, uh, to see the uh, identification of the DME. I put it here and it activates the identification of NAV1. And uh, this one is running with explain now, which is something that everybody asked for. Yeah. Uh, inc including me. Including, <laughs> actually, when I say everybody, it was Paul. <laughs> Paul and, Just and me going, explain? I remember, yeah, the, the last sentence before getting the plane was, next year I want explain. That's right. And we did that, so that's actually one of the, the biggest things. Uh, so all our, you've seen the growth and explain. All our, our flight panels are now explain yeah. compatible. Yeah. So, are these designed, you, you buy the whole thing here, or do you just so buy you, one? Exactly, so you buy, um, this is used for a turnkey solution. Yeah. So if you have explain at home with your PC, yeah. you don't buy, you don't need all of this. You just need the PMP and MMP. Yeah. And the only one, which is this thing. Um, and you can put it into your, your uh, configuration, your panel, or you have this. Just this, yeah. Desktop. Like it's uh, it's gotcha. a support. Yeah. Well, thank you for the overview. Thank you. You got some great products. Yeah, and, uh, we're trying to to come up with new ones every time. But you know. Yeah. yeah. This is Oscar from Virtual Flight. Make a great bunch of products. I'll leave all the links in the video if you want to check out their stuff. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Paul. Nice to see you again. You. Right. I'm here with Tim from uh, Thrustmaster. How you doing, guys? We're going to talk through what they've got on show here at the expo and uh, the new products they've got and also. Can start off by looking at the uh, the pedals you've got here. Yeah, the TPR. I mean, so this is our first year physically at Flight Sim Expo. Right. It's our first chance in the U.S. at least to engage directly with the Flight Sim fans and and, and content creators like yourself. Yeah. Uh, the TPR rudder pedals actually launched last year uh, at Oshkosh, the Oshkosh Air Show. Yeah. But they have been a huge success for us within the flight sim community, so we're always putting them up here front and center, like you can see. I think what's unique about this is the difference to every other rudder pedal on the market, aren't they? Every other, absolutely yeah. every other mass market rudder pedal on yeah. the market, and most of the custom stuff you can buy as well. Um, unlike most rudder pedals on the market, which are well, generally plastic and run on a rail system, yeah. these are as close to the real thing as you can get. Okay. They're a pendular system, so as one moves, the other moves the opposite. Toe brake's functional, functional, and it's a 100% metal unit. Okay. So as far as a, a, as far as a rudder pedals, it's, it's as good as you can get in a real plane, in a sim environment. Yeah, it's quite a weight to it as well. It's Absolutely, all metal They're huge, uh, about a 15 pound unit, 100% uh, metal construction. Everything you see on it is customizable yep. via the hardware and of course via software as well. So you can change the angle, the width, the height, the uh, the, the, the tension, uh, all that kind of stuff of all the different rudder, rudder pedals. And then of course in game as well, you can, you can customize yeah. sensitivity and all those kinds of things. That makes sense. So super popular with both the civilian flight simmers and the combat flight okay. simmers. My, my immediate question would be, because you've got this tower design, mm -hmm. how do you stop this thing from, from sliding or moving or toppling over? So most of the, the people who are investing in a pair of rudder, rudder pedals of this size yeah. generally have a fairly good setup already. Yeah. So we've of course offered them the option of bolting it down yeah. if they're using a cockpit or if they have a fairly permanent place to do their simming. Yeah. If they don't, uh, we do have uh, rubber pads on the bottom, which will catch on either, a, 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 which will keep it steady on either a, a wood floor, like a, like, a, like a laminate surface or yeah. a, a carpeted surface. Okay. If that's not good enough, uh, which sometimes it isn't, we totally understand. We recommend using something that is sturdy and yet removable if you're gonna be taking them in right. and out of your sim, like an industrial strength double-sided Velcro or gotcha. something similar. Yeah. Um, so there's a lot of different options. I mean, usually the, the, the simmer kind of knows there are, these are generally an upgrade set of pedals. Yep. So they already have a rudder pedals uh, system in place. And so this is kind of replacing that plastic kind of more toy-like right, right. uh, system with something more, more permanent and better. Absolutely. Um, so that's, they generally kind of know how they would fit them into their own. Yeah, uh, they're, they're huge. This setup. thing's huge. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah, it's huge. Solid construction. Super solid, super heavy. So the weight themselves, of course, keep them in place to some degree. Works with all the flight sims? B3D, all the flight sims out yeah. of the box, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And of course, if, if for whatever reason it doesn't work out of the box, uh, you can map it in game or in via our own so uh, gotcha. software. Gotcha. Yeah. Every, every, essentially every flight sim software that, uh, that accepts hardware will out of the box accept this. Right. Yeah. Now, you've also got a new product, Samus, haven't you? Yeah, we do. And that's on the combat side. 
That's yeah. the F-18C Hornet stick. Um, so the, I'm, I'm guessing you worked with... Um, Boeing. With, with, yeah, okay. Yeah. And because the Hornet has obviously come out on DCS. It has, yeah, um, absolutely. Yeah. So, we were so the timing to, seems uncanny. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, the, uh, the timing was not as uncanny as was originally planned. Right. It's a very complicated system to work with uh, the military and with Boeing and make sure that all the licensing gets in place. Right. When you're making something that's a one-to-one -one replica, it yeah. needs to be perfect. It yeah. needs to work perfect in games uh, in terms of like the balance and the functionality, but it needs to be as close to the real thing as possible. Right. So, so that's a very complicated system. We may have been a little optimistic when we teased it at E3 2017 and then we re teased it at E3 2018, which is around the time when the uh, Hornet module came out in DCS World. Right, yeah. Uh, so now, but here we are one year later around E3 and Flight Sim Expo uh, launching this. Uh, we're, we're, we work very closely with WAGS and the whole team over at Eagle Dynamics to make sure that this is, uh, again, out of the box compatible. As authentic, yeah. As a, and, and as authentic both to the real world. Uh, stick and to the uh, digital uh, module as, yeah. as, as possible. Because I mean, I use the Warthog, mm -hmm. and that's a licensed product as well, Absolutely, isn't it? Absolutely, yeah, yeah. It's a U.S. Air Force and Boeing licensed product as well. Right. Yeah. So it's it's bang on the money in terms exactly. of how it works, and it's Absolutely. the same with this. Exactly the same thing with this. Of course, it's a Navy uh, uh, jet as opposed to the U.S. Air Force jet, so we had to go jump through a few other hoops. Yeah. But uh, but absolutely, this is exactly the same idea of being a one-to-one -one replica okay. as the Warthog was and the Cougar before that. Okay. So how does I mean this comes with a throttle quadrant as well? Does it use the same as the Warthog? This one or is it doesn't different? come with a throttle or okay. even a base. We yeah. made a decision uh, earlier on in the process to, to to just to back up a bit. Essentially, every every. We, we know that the majority of combat flight simmers out there own the Warthog already. It is yep. the number one selling right. stick and throttle system on the market. So initially, and this won't be a final answer, but initially this is only being sold as an add-on. Okay. So it's being sold as an add-on. It works onto the Warthog base. It even works on the Cougar base if you happen to have one of those, but you don't have the Warthog. Right. So that allows, allows <laughs> us to keep the price as low as possible and really uh, appeal to those those hardcore flight sim guys from day one. Okay. Eventually, we're going to of course explore and evaluate the option of releasing this with a base, or maybe even an upgraded base, or releasing uh, the base by itself or something similar to be able to even introduce it to even more people uh, down the road. Okay. So is the idea then you've got your Warthog set up, you just pop that on, replaces your uh, your Warthog throttle. But you uh, carry stick, on stick, the stick, sorry, stick. and carry on using your Warthog throttle. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So right now we don't have a Hornet throttle. Of yeah. course, it's something we've evaluated closely. It's something we've heard a lot of today, of course, as well. Uh, in general, um, I think it's safe to say that that part of the Thrustmaster mentality, can, the future mentality or strategy, can be seen teased kind of in this product. Uh, we are trying to move towards a system which is more modular, kind of an ecosystem of build it yourself or customize okay. your Okay. own cockpit the way we've done on our racing side or, or driving side um, where you can essentially buy one one base and interchange the wheels based on the plane or the game that you're playing uh, so this is the first tease of that hopefully we'll be able to work forward release a few more sticks and maybe even one day uh, work something like that into the throttle system as well where right. we have a throttle that's modular yeah. or multiple different throttles so you can either build your own dream cockpit or dream uh, dream uh, jet uh, interior or you can uh, try to get as close to the possible close as possible to the real thing do you see yourself sort of staying on the military side of aviation or do you, do you think you'll move more into the sort of that's a good question I mean uh, we I don't think it's uh, unfair to say that the military side is definitely what we focused on the yeah. most in the past in terms of our highest end products. Uh, this, of course, works equally well on, on, on military and yep. on, on commercial, but the modularity of the systems will hopefully allow us to expand mm. into from what is currently just combat into commercial and then even to space or, or mech or other play, yeah. other types yeah. of, uh, of, of gameplay styles that require a joystick. Sure. So once we've got uh, you know a few a few more years a few more years from now, I think uh, you'll be pretty pleased to see that uh, we've really played around with that modularity to be able to appeal to even more even bigger percentage of so the flight sim market. If you wanted to make um, a stick for perhaps Elite Dangerous or Star Citizen or go into the space Absolutely. market. 
in theory, you could just pop on a new stick and on in off theory, you go. In theory, and of yeah. course, we have to we have to balance out with licensing issues yeah. and things like that. But in theory, yeah. that is what the ideal situation will be a few years down the road. And of course, the benefit of space is you don't need to license it necessarily. <laughs> you yeah. license it to the software, or you could kind of we could kind of create some really cool stuff ourselves. Okay. Uh, and we can do the same thing on combat and the same thing on civilian. And so so look for this kind of stuff uh, in the future. Uh, I think this is a baby step towards what we see as the bigger picture and the bigger strategy. For the so in terms of like the expo itself, what kind of thing was you trying to do when you when you created this? Was you just trying to show off the uh, the sticks or? Well, yeah. I mean, this is our this is our, the second year of Flight Sim Expo. Yeah. Of course, Flight Sim Con existed before it. Uh, we sponsored it last year, but we thought it was super important to physically be here this year. Right. And we actually have used this event to launch this product yeah. out to the community. The, the, the product, of course, has been teased in the past, and we've talked about it in the past, but at this product, we're offering it from pre-order as of yesterday on Amazon.com or on our okay. own web shop uh, in the EU, and of course, it'll be available tomorrow, which is Monday, available at all other retailers. So it's a pre-order or It's to, a pre-order right. as well, yeah. It'll ship end of July. Gotcha, okay. Uh, so this uh, currently is a uh, an event where we've decided to launch this stick officially and no longer take little steps and actually say it's pre-orderable as of today the day we're announcing it yep. here's the price here are the specs here's the product put it into flight simmers hands and and make sure that it, we can make as much noise as possible um, because we're super proud of the product and we know the flight sim community is going to love it just as much sure well i think you make some great products um i love i love this thing and the Warthog has been my your go to my, my go to for and years. It is. For, and it for is. most most combat simmers it yeah. is, which we're we're super proud of. Yeah. And uh, we're hoping to expand that into the future. Right. Well thanks for your time. Thanks, Paul. Tim from uh, Thrustmaster. Right, I'm with Wainant. Uh Vainant? Vainant, yes. <laughs> from uh, G Force Factory. They've got a rather interesting product here. Uh, it's a, a, a full motion rig, but it's very, very compact. Um, do you want to just talk me quickly through, you were saying it was a six axis motion sim? Yeah, so this is a six axis motion, motion sim. So it has the same base as the professional aviation training systems okay. and the big industrial halls. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, well, we miniaturized it uh, to uh, this uh, one square meter. And, um, well, it can do both the side movements, but also the angling. Okay. So that makes it uh, this, this realistic. Um, so the thing is, is that it supports all games, so you can do flight sims, but also racing and uh, okay. yeah, rally, rally driving, and like myself, uh, especially. Your, your technical guy was saying that it, uh, you, you went through a, a couple of like prototypes, yeah. had a hydraulic version. Now you've yes. got like a brushless motor version, right. which is what's in there. Yeah. So the so, thing is, it's fully electric. Yeah. Uh, it is uh, maintenance free okay. because it has uh, only some gearboxes running. Okay. And for the rest, it's contactless. So it has no wear. Yeah. Uh, it's uh, so very reliable. Very reliable. It's in commercial use actually. Yeah. So okay. we have uh, here in the U.S. We have already uh, sim centers uh, provided with uh, multiple systems, okay. and they run 10 hours a day. Uh, yeah. So. So you plug it into the power supply. You yeah. plug it into the computer. Yeah. You can see that behind this because we have one socket, and on that single socket we have the monitor, the PC, the system. All of it uh, just on one socket. Okay. Yeah. And w when you buy it, you then just mount a uh, like a monitor on top, do you? Yeah, it's uh, it's optional. So you have the motion base as one piece. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, everything on top is uh, well optional. So you have a seat. Uh, you can mount up to three monitors. Okay. Uh, even the curved ones, so you have a full oh. vision. Okay. Uh, or of course you can just use the headset. Yeah. yeah. So you put a seat on there, put your monitor on there. Yeah. Whatever controls you want to use, be it racing or exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And yeah. then you're good to go. Yeah, sure. sounds fantastic. <laughs> so uh, the, the the funny thing is is that uh, it even runs from a uh, PlayStation. So really? You have, yeah, you have several some some games that you know you just can plug in like Formula One or a Rally. Yeah. It's, uh, yeah. Okay. Do, dare I ask roughly how much this thing costs? Yeah, the motion base is uh, from nine thousand US. Okay. Uh, and the options will add several hundreds. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So that's the G Force factory, guys. Very compact, full motion sim. Works with racing, flight sims, looks fantastic. So I just came across this company called uh, Simionic, and they've got an interesting little product. They make a, a wraparound, effectively, for the iPad, which gives you a G1000. So this unit you buy, I think he said it was 1,500 US dollars. Uh, so you buy the whole unit, 
and then you have to, of course, buy a couple of iPads. But then you get two G1000s with all the controls. Uh, you plug the cable in, which gives you uh, lightning, light, a lightning adapter, which gives you power to the panel so you can backlight it, and powers and charges the iPads as well. They actually connect to the iPad via Bluetooth. So when you press the buttons here, uh, it interacts with the iPad app, which they also give you, uh, and gives you full G1000, talks to X-Plane and P3D. Yeah, it says it utilizes a 9.7 inch iPad, adjustable backlight brightness, uh, high fidelity G1000 system for Cessna 172, 182, 206, and Beechcraft G58. Apps run independently or with desktop flight simulators. Yeah, so anyway, Simionic G1000 for the iPad. All right, I'm with none other, Jeff Faviano, Hello. my buddy. <laughs> good to see you. Always good to see you, man. Yeah, so Always Jeff's good. got his own booth, his own streaming booth. So Only because busy. I live local, I can bring it here. Yeah, you're like 30 minutes away. Yeah. Yeah. So he's like brought all this gear. This is presumably what you use when you flight sim. This is what I use when I flight sim. Uh, it is uh, what I use when I stream too. Like this is my entire streaming. This is all set for Boeing, or sorry, for Airbus. Uh, Boeing, I just use a, you know, the Yoko Yoke snap yeah. on top of there. Okay. And I'll put the keyboard on top of that. Uh, but yeah, I mean, that's that's the whole setup. So, so this is your mic, your monitor, your PC, your light, like this is everything you use? Everything I use. So this is behind the scenes, basically. Yeah. yeah. If you want to know what I use, this is it. <laughs> uh, the Rudder Rudder pedals from Virtual Fly. Uh, I've got the Thrustmaster Hotas Warthog, which I love about this. You can just lift up and pull back for your yeah, reverse thrust. The Warthog. Yeah, so that's good stuff. And then the, the VKB uh, Sim Gladiator. And you messed with that a little bit. I did, but I'm curious as it's to why you use the, uh, the Warthog's throttle. But you see. Because of the, it feels like a, it's, it's a mushy stick. Yeah. Like the, uh, the Warthog is a heavy stick. Yeah, it is. If I'm flying Airbus, I just want to kind of just gently push it where I want it to go. Do you know what I did? I bought a, um, it's like a spacer you can get, like for the. I've heard about that. Warthog, you put it up like that, it makes a stick and it gives you a little bit more leverage. Right. It's actually nice, you buy different sizes. Yeah, and there was something that was like, you sand that ball down in there or something like yeah, that. I didn't go down that route. You didn't do that. Because <laughs> that's how you make it like really ultra smooth. But if you smooth. get it wrong, you completely mess it up, apparently. Yeah. yeah. No, so absolutely. what have you been streaming? Uh, we've been streaming X-Plane 11. Uh, the Flight Factor A320 has been kind of the, the main focus because I don't have a yoke for Boeing. Um, but it's it's been fun. I, we uh, I was able to bring all this stuff, and I haven't been streaming so much as letting other streamers do it. Yeah, like right. letting other uh, you know uh, YouTubers and or stream, Twitch streamers uh, just use the equipment and have fun. That's been that's been the, the best thing, and they get to be like, "Whoa, this is awesome!" Yeah, <laughs> that's well cool. Because you keep pestering me to fly, share yeah. cockpit on Pilot Edge. Yes, we need to do that. We need to actually do that. Yeah, I just started getting back into Pilot Edge. Yeah, a lot. Yeah, and uh, no, that would be a lot of fun. I think we could, if we're going to get yelled at. We'll get both yelled at the same time. Nah, we'll be fine. But <laughs> I, I did it with uh, Cat Straiter in a GA plane. Yeah. So, because with a GA plane, we both, like, one of us did the radio, one of us did, like, the actual flying, yeah. and then we switched over. And the advantage to that is it's just, everything's a bit slower. It so, is, yes. But it is different, like, if you fly instrument to VFR. So. Right. For, for uh, airline stuff, it, like, I, I love dual crew on Pilot Edge, because one person's flying, one person takes care of the radios. Yeah. Those guys that do it all at once, like I, I've done it, but it's like, it's it's a task. You can see why there's two guys up front. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Pilot Edge gives you that uh, that experience. Of, yeah. This is for real, like it, it's it's intense. It is, there's a lot of workload sometimes, depending on where you go. But. Yes. So have you had a good expo? Had a great expo. This has been, this has probably been one of the best ones so far. Uh, just being able to meet so many, like I recently just started going through and watching a bunch of guys that are in the community, uh, you know, Twitch streams and all that. So I got to know them. So when I came here, it was kind of weird. It's like, uh, like I met like Brad M and, and, and guys that I've seen. And it's like, for me, it's like, you know, they're they're like a celebrity to me. So I'm like, this is weird meeting you. Yeah, this yeah. is cool. I'm, I'm a fan of what you do. Yeah, they're all here. Yeah, and then they're like, oh, I like what you do. And it's, <laughs> it, it's so cool to, to, to meet those people in person and just, uh, you know, see, see the community grow. Like, this expo is huge. Yeah, it's getting bigger. It was like 1577 with the final number. Um, and we started going up in Connecticut uh, when it was just like a hangar full of a few hundred people. Yeah. And it's, 
It's a huge expo hall now. And meanwhile, back in, back in Cosford, the flight show there, they've gone to two days as well. Yeah. So they're you know, obviously getting bigger as well. So I think the whole right. thing is just getting bigger. It is. It's definitely getting bigger. Um, there's a lot more people that are getting involved with the, uh, yeah. the, the sim versus real world aviation aspect of it. And it's blending well. Um, and I, I think a lot of that has to do with, uh, you know, the technology of the sims now. The realism of the sims now is just coming along so much. So good. And when you have ortho scenery like uh, Orbix uh, and you have ortho for XP, which is yep. free, like you can actually do VFR flying in sim. And in VR, it's even more insane. Yep. Uh, and then go get in a real airplane and be like, whoa, I already know what the approach looks like if I'm coming to an airport I've never been to. Yep. I, I did that. I, I flew down the south coast in, uh, with Orbex scenery. Right. Because I'm going to do it for real. And so I wanted to see what it looks like. And it's just phenomenally Spot good. Spot on. Perfect. Yeah, it really is. And that's uh, what I like about VR is that, like, especially in a Cessna, like, you just get the you can, you can fly VFR easily. Yeah. You, know, you can look down, and do turn around a point, you can you can do actual pilotage. Yeah. Um, with ortho, because land class you can't really do that. Like you, you you'll pick up like a tower or a building or something, but it's not the same thing. It's not what you're gonna you're gonna see when you're in the flight. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Well, it's great catching up with you, buddy. Absolutely. Appreciate it. Yeah, that's Jeff Fabiano. Yes. I'm sure you know his channel anyway, but yeah. Squirrel. <laughs> All right, guys, the expo is over. I'm here with Mr. Dirk or Brenda, my good friend. Cheers, and we're just going to sort of uh, talk about our thoughts on the expo and what we saw and yeah. what we think, what was new and great. And uh, yeah, I mean, it started off, I mean, I, was there anything in the show for you that kind of was like, oh, Oh, baby. Was there anything in the show that sort of really caught your eye? Paul, I'm going to go one back. And we've discussed this many a times. I think these expos, you know, Cosford, yeah. you know, when we went to TwitchCon in Berlin, to me, it's the whole social thing. I agree. Um, obviously, I came to see developers and, yeah. see, you know, see the latest things. But for me, it's, it's the social thing. Yeah. You know, meeting up with you, as always, you know, with, with Chewy, with everyone, you know, all the guys who flew over. Yeah. So yeah, to answer your question, I think that for me, that's the number one. Yeah. Is the social thing, and I think you agree, don't you? I, I totally agree. I mean, yeah. I, I see guys I only see them once a year. That's it. Loads exactly. of great guys who, who are yeah. in the sim world, the aviation world. And, yeah. And and it's so nice to catch exactly. up with them. So let's let's start off with the uh, let's say Orbex, right? Okay. So they announced Washington. Yeah. Uh, and they announced Australia V2. What yeah. do you think? Amazing. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think it's typical Orbex quality, <laughs> yeah, isn't it? <laughs> absolutely Orbex quality. Um, you guys know I'm, I'm sort of linked a bit with, uh, with Orbex, so I, I've seen some of those products. I have seen them yeah. for, for a couple of months. And um, I love flying in Australia, so when they announced version 2 for Australia, that yeah, they showed like a V1 yeah, and, a, and a version exactly. 2, and it was. And it's like, you, you just can't really compare. <laughs> no. it, it's, and I think what, what I like, and, and I'm sorry, I'm now I'm sort of jumping ahead now what i like what they've done is they've only charged us a small amount yeah yeah, yeah. It, it's almost a brand new product that's right but they did they, they took care of the customers yeah and didn't say hey guys you got to pay full price exactly. again and, and i think and it's the same with it's the same with um with all the the p3d stuff which is going over on to um explain, uh, explain. yeah yeah they they've given everybody a 40 yeah. percent discount which is which fun. i think is great yeah, yeah. Um, but going back to um, australia uh, it, yeah it looks absolutely amazing yeah it does um, the presentation yeah you, you saw the presentation it's it's, it's stunning i yeah. can't wait to fly uh, over that stuff they, they've just upgraded everything the auto gen the mesh um, they, oh, look at all those. Look at look at Melbourne. How how good was Melbourne? Melbourne was City? amazing. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Melbourne was amazing. Yeah, Melbourne was was so good. And then moving on to uh, let's say Thrustmaster. Yes. Did you go and see Thrustmaster? I did go see Thrustmaster. Um, I know you you've done. I know you've done a lot of DCS. I'm not too big on DCS. I have done a little bit in the past. Yeah. But that new Hornet. Um, I think yeah. I think you've got one to show. This one here. There we go. Uh, yeah, that looked. Yeah, absolutely. Looks, looks great. Yeah. So what I, what I didn't know they were going to do, because if you've got the Warthog, like I fly with the Warthog, the, uh, the, the, the yoke, uh, so the stick and, the, uh, and the, the throttle, this thing is a replacement for the, for the yoke, for the stick. <laughs> you just unscrew it, take it off, put yeah. this one on, use the same base, same throttle, and off you go. And we actually yeah. spoke to them about it, and, and they kind of gave me the... Uh, I think there's a little picture there as well. The Hornet stick, yeah. yeah. 
So it's just a drop-in yeah. replacement. Yeah, that's yeah. And you know, Hornet's just come out. Well, recently came out on DCS. Yeah. So if you love the Hornet, this is a, a great add-on to get. And I think what I like about Thrustmaster, and I know you've used your, you've used their products for quite for a, a long while, time. Yeah. Uh, I've only really started getting into them. I have uh, the new TPR pedals, which are absolutely yeah. amazing. But just just feeling the quality and yeah. the build quality and it, they're, they're not cheap. No. But I think someone, I was actually streaming, I was actually streaming on the booth, yeah. Or, yeah and someone put a, um, uh, some, someone wrote in, in on the chat, um, they the Porsche, or I think the Porsche or the Ferrari, the, whatever it was, <laughs> are flight simming yeah. when it comes to hardware. Yeah. And I think that sort of sums it up because... They do make good stuff. <laughs> yeah, the stuff was, yeah. was really good. So. Well, I mean, it's all licensed as well, so it has to be. It has oh, to work exactly like the real thing, because it's all licensed. See, that I didn't know. Yeah, licensed from Boeing. Uh, Okay. Yeah, that's what okay. took so long. It was supposed to be out like last year, uh, but they had to get it all absolutely okay. bang on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and then uh, what did we see? We saw Honeycomb. Yeah. So Honeycomb's an interesting one, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, that. I've been following those guys pretty much from the start. Yeah. Um, and I know we discussed this earlier as well. I think the, the flights and market has been waiting for a yoke which is not like a ridiculous amount. Yeah. And I think we know which... Yeah, expensive. Yeah, expensive, yeah. yeah. Um, I think with, with the honeycomb, and we've got one down here, and I think we'll bring it up in a sec. Um, they've, they've come in at, they've come in at a, right, at, at a yeah. right price. It's a very aggressive yeah. price point. Yeah. Um, and we tried it. I mean, the, the actual, like the, I was speaking to the guy, um, uh, Nicky, I think his name yeah, is. Yeah, Nicky, yeah. I was speaking to the guy, and the, the detail, the thought that he's put into it, like, Everything had to be just the right yeah. size. Yeah. Like he, he made one prototype and they just went, no, that's yeah. too small, make it bigger. Yeah. Then they had to get the action right and the push-pull action yeah. right. Everything has been thought yeah. you about. Can, you can see that yeah, yeah. there's just been a lot of thought. I know even, even the clamps and like the suction pad, I think they did, like they worked on that for months and months and months, yeah. just making sure that it is, it is right. Yeah. So they, they, you know, I, I, I think the original stuff they were looking at was just they were just just not happy with it. No. So they redesigned it, re-looked at things, and I think he's driven a lot of his uh, manufacturing design guys yeah. up the wall with this yeah, because yeah, yeah. it's like this isn't quite right. It yeah. needs to be just like yeah, this. Yeah. But oh, it yeah. it yeah, is. There's, there's I mean, one there. yeah. there's the actual thing. It is a heavy yeah. bit of kit, I have to say, and this is just the yoke itself. The actual throttle unit that will come with it won't come till next year. Um, but this is just the yoke, and I think he said two twenty dollars. Two twenty dollars um, is going for uh, pre-order next week. Yeah, I've heard two rumors that there's only going to be one hundred units, okay. and someone said two hundred units. Okay. So guys, if you if you've also been waiting for one of these, two hundred, and then that's gone. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I think you yeah you need to. You I, need I to, think. I don't know how quickly they're going to make yeah. these things, but I think they'll fly off yeah. the shelves. I yeah, really and do. I, and I, I, I say it again, I think we've been waiting for one of these at, at the rice pr price range. Yeah. Because, yeah, there's, there's a lot of other products on the market, which the average flight summer, we, we can't afford. Yeah. No. I, we, we can't. No, no. no. Um, there's, some, there's some bits of equipment in the flight sim yeah. world that cost the same as a PC. That's it. And, <laughs> and, 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 and yeah, and, and, and no disrespect to anybody. People just can't afford it. No, um, you know, as an average flight sim, and we know we know the flight simming age gap. We know there's a there's a young market. Yeah. Guys can't afford a thousand pounds or eight thousand dollars, whatever. Uh, so yeah, these guys have done it well. I'll make a prediction. Okay. My prediction is that will be on a lot of people's Christmas list this year. Yeah, absolutely. Because yeah. it'll come yeah. out. It'll start shipping. Yeah. I've heard rumors about the review in PC Pilot oh, that's coming okay. out. That's coming uh, out. I've heard okay. rumors that it's up, and really? that I think will do extremely well. Okay. Okay. I don't think I'll be able to make them quickly enough. Yeah. So if you want to pre-order it, I suggest you get <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you get in the quick. I'm getting mine. I'm getting mine. <laughs> so. Uh, Who yeah, else I, did we see? Uh, uh, you, you spoke to the um, the TFDI yeah, guys, TFDI right? TFDI guys, uh, the Pax X. So, I, I didn't get a chance to speak yeah. to them. So, so what is the pack set? it is. So I like doing. Paul, you're the same. When, when we fly, we try and make it as real as possible. Yeah. 
you know, so weather, yeah. clouds, whatever. The only thing I don't like doing is flying at night time. Yeah. So um, this just adds an extra immersion. So all it, it basically, it's a, um, you get messages from the flight deck and from, okay. and from, the, from the cabin crew. So you can do things like, where do I start? Medical emergencies. Um, <laughs> well, the, the, so the passengers that you're carrying. Yeah. Right. So okay. you can you can program that um, even before the flight is started. You can put a medical emergency in. So just say you just say you uh, you you're doing a pushback. You can program in something that someone has someone has whatever, and then the, you hear the you hear the cabin crew saying, "Oh, captain." Um, we're very sorry we, we've got someone who's not feeling well you know just just stuff like that you can you have you have um, try explaining that to Vatsim when you're online yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I've got a medical emergency yeah, you've got exactly. a what <laughs> um, that's right God, there's just so much I'm just trying to think of everything so I, presumably you get all the ambience the, yeah. um, when you land yeah. the, do they sort of rate your landing and that kind of thing yeah they rate your landing so what, what I did was we did a um, we did an engine fire yeah so you, you program the engine fire in uh, the the cabin crew come up and say ladies and gentlemen we've got a, a, a emergency yeah um, no one panic we, we're going to be doing um, you know we, we, we're going to the nearest airport uh, brace you know you hear all that type of thing Blimey. so there's a, there's like three I think Colin said there's like three to four hundred different scenarios and different voice voice packs yeah from from good afternoon sir welcome aboard to brace put your head down yeah. type of thing um, you know uh, ladies and gentlemen we are passing 10,000 feet now you can now take off your um, seatbelt okay let's go so so again I'm a perfect example and I know there's plenty of other people out there it just adds that extra mm. immersion mm. of when you're flying a, mm. a Boeing plane or an Airbus plane and it's um, P3D only no you see, this is what I thought. It's X-Plane as it's well. It's P3D and X-Plane. P3D and X-Plane and all the planes. Fantastic. All the planes. So no, again, I thought it was just P3D and the 717. It is all planes, X-Plane, P3D. Fantastic. Yeah. Colin did say that they are tweaking a couple of things. Uh, there will be, you know, there will be some updates coming, but just, just small little tweaks here and there. But uh, yeah, it's a great little package. Uh, I, 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 I would say, yeah, guys, go, go check it out. Uh, if you just want to add, like, cabin sounds, cabin announcements, emergency announcements, that type of thing. Is it, is it out now? Or? It is now. Yeah. It, it launched, like, like, a week ago. Oh, right, actually, okay. just before we flew yeah. out. Okay. So, so, yeah, so that's a, that, that was a fun product. That's, TF, that's a really TFDI's PAX X, yeah, that was. Yeah, PAX X, yeah, that was, that, was a fun, uh, that was a fun little package, so... Did you speak to anybody else at the show that uh, something that caught your eye? I mean, I spoke to Navigraph. I think, did you speak to Navigraph? I had a quick chat with Navigraph. Yeah, they've, they've yeah. got some new chart stuff coming, which uh, yeah. looks very, very interesting. Um, ability to overlay, you know, approaches uh, and airport diagrams on top of a route, uh, which you can specify a bit like you can with, say, four flights, something like that. Uh, Navigraph looks, looks really good, yeah. so I'm going to take a look at that in the future. So did you was... see, um, next to Navigraph, there was a... I think it was called something like G, G-Force X or something. It was like a full yes. motion. Yeah, I, I um, tried to get onto it, but it, there was- It was busy. Yeah, it was really busy. Um, that looked pretty cool. I spoke to them, Okay. six axis it is, six axis that thing. You plug it into the mains, plug the USB in, and the whole thing is like, so it's like a proper flight, like a, a real flight sim. Yeah. Mach machinery would move in six axes. That, yeah. So that looks insane. I didn't get a go of it, but no, it looks I didn't, crazy. I didn't get a go. So I, I, I did see it. Um, what, I, yeah, what I liked about the whole thing, and I know, um, I know the guys at uh, Truck Truck Fest had the the whole, you know, yeah. the whole motion thing. That's right. So this was, yeah, this was pretty much VR with a whole, yeah, you just your whole seat just rocked from yeah, yeah. front forward, left right. It's very immersive, yeah, and it was very compact yeah. as well. That's the yeah. thing. They spent a lot of time just. Normally these full motion rigs are pretty big. Yeah. He spent a lot of time making this compact. Yeah. No, absolutely. Um, Paul, the other guys which stood out, and I know, uh, I think you were quite impressed, was the, was it Prop Wash Avionics? Was it uh, Prop? Prop, Prop Wash Av uh, Aviation or Aeronautical, yeah. something like that. Prop Wash, they, they, yeah, 
we had a chat with them. You had yeah, a chat with them. I had a chat with them. That looks, again, for affordability. Oh, the affordability is great. It was great. So what it is, it's, it's like you've got your, your nav, your nav, um, your nav, um, yeah, there's little radio stack. Yeah, the radio you. stack. Sorry, that's yeah. all. Yeah, the radio stack. So you got your comms, your nav, but it was like twenty four dollars. Yeah, twenty four. Twenty four dollars, and it was, it and was really well made as well. Yeah, you can, and you can buy multiple yeah, of them and can. assign each one to do different things. Yeah, that's it. So, um, so they had a they had a radio stack, they had an autopilot yeah. stack as well. That one was a little limited, unfortunately. You could only um, you could only use well all the equipment actually can only use on uh, on X plane. Yeah. I think you need like to download something extra to, to get it working right. on, on P3D. Right. So it, it is only limited on um, uh, on on X plane. But there was an autopilot which was really good. But again, it was quite limited. You couldn't mm. use any like uh, Airbus or Boeing or anything like that. It had. Um, had the G, what was it, what's uh, the G? A GTN, well, they had a GTN 650, 50, I think. Yeah. And, uh, and they had a G1, I think they had a G1000. 1000 as well, remember. yeah. So... It's quite a few people with panels, but they were, they were the, the price point of those yeah. things are crazy. Yeah. So that, that, I was really impressed with those. Again, they're just making a really affordable yeah. for people to get a different experience from their flight simming yeah. without, you know, burning, you know, yeah. burning your wallet. And, and, and that's what I like well, to see. Which means you can spend money on, on other things, that's basically. Yeah. Exactly, because you know, if you go to spend, yeah, like whatever amount on some some unit, you just got nothing left for yeah, totally. for, for, for for everything else. Yeah. So I like these developers who are doing quality products, but at nice affordable prices. Yeah. So the average the average flight simmer can afford it. I agree. And 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 it and it, and it increases. Their, their, you know, the immersion, and it makes the thing, it makes it more real. It makes it more real. In terms of the uh, the size of it, it seemed like it was bigger than the Vegas last year. Yeah. So it seems to be on an on a, an upward trend. It's getting bigger every year. Orlando itself, I mean, it's great to visit. It's a bit hot and humid for yeah. me. <laughs> it's nice in here. Yeah, it's lovely. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. I, I kind of feel like people here just seem to dive from one air conditioned venue to another. Yeah. <laughs> And stay out of the worst of it out there. I've I've had a great time in Orlando. I know we've we've hung out a bit together. Um, I, I think Orlando has been a, a, a good. Um, it's been a good resort. Yeah, I mean. been a good resort. And again, I, I I know I've been going on about this affordability. I think especially for us who are flying from the UK, you know, it's not cheap. No. But flying to the East Coast compared to. Vegas or somewhere on the West Coast, it's cheaper. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's been it's been a lot cheaper, and it's less brutal on the jet lag. Yes, like it's exactly. five hours instead of eight hours yes. time zone difference. No, absolutely. So that makes a big difference. Uh, the conference itself, the, the vibe felt a little different this year. Mm -hmm. I think it felt like uh, the stands were spread out more. Yeah, you yeah. Know, weren't weren't on, on top of each other. That's you know? true. I like the big open space in yeah, the middle with the yeah, bean bags. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, they had some bean bags. They had yeah. some tables where people could chill out yeah. and all that. I think that was great. Max had his little uh, just chatting coffee booth. Yeah, that was interesting. So Matt and Nico had that. So they had like you know a thousand <laughs> espresso coffees yeah, and a yeah, little yeah. lounge area. Yeah. Nothing flight sim related. No. Just hey, just come here and hang out. I think that was the most popular <laughs> most popular stand. It's uh, great. <laughs> yeah, it's great. And that's all we'll say about that. Yeah. <laughs> No, Paul. I think overall, I think Orlando has been a good, um, yeah. a good venue. Um, Next year, what do you reckon? What do you reckon it's going to go? I, I think it's going to go back to Vegas. Yeah, that's, that's well, sort they of, sort of said it. The voting seems to have yeah. gone between Chicago yeah. and Vegas, yeah. but I think for whatever reason, it probably will go back yeah. to Vegas. Um, so I, I, I've heard that it is Vegas. Yeah. They are just going to finalize where in Vegas it's going to be. Because where was it last year? Flamingo. Flamingo. So I've heard this. Which is on the main strip. Yeah. So, so what I've heard, it is going to be Vegas. But I think they've got two or three hotels where they're just negotiating like a price for rooms and conference room and that type of thing. They need to keep it central though, because the one, the one thing that Vegas had over this is in Vegas, we could walk down the road to the hotel, or we could walk to a restaurant, walk to a bar. Everything was yeah, around no, you. No, that is that is very. Here, yeah, no, I, yes. 
there's nothing. Yeah. There's Disney over there, yeah. Sea World over here. Yeah. Yeah. There's nowhere to go out no, unless you drive to the strip. It's true. Yeah, we you've been you've you've driven us. You took us. Yep. Yeah, we went for dinner last night. We went for dinner the other night. Yep. <coughs> Excuse me. That is that that's a very good point. Yeah. That is a very good point. It, it seems to be a lot more spread out. Yeah. Um, and I think people like that. Yeah. People like that. Um, yeah. You don't want to be yeah going going all over yeah. the place. Yeah. But if they go to Vegas and they sort of you know stick it way way out in the stick somewhere people yeah. won't like it it has well, I, to be central yeah i did hear because you mentioned chicago i did hear that if, if chicago even though i think it's pretty confirmed vegas is but if chicago does sort of come th through last minute i did hear it's going to be like right out yeah like right no, out of the city that won't work and i agree i think i think things like that just doesn't work hey no because people they've got to think about not just the event They've got to think about what people do outside of the yeah. event. And it is a social yeah. thing, as we've Ab said before. Yeah, and people want to go to the bars, yeah. they want to go to the absolutely. restaurants, and they need to enable that to happen. Well, look what happened. We got invited to a couple of things. It was like, like 40 minutes away. Yeah. Do you, like yeah. We've had a long day. Do you want to go 40 minutes? Do you minutes? want to try? Yeah, like, another, like travel another <laughs> 40 minutes. Because it's not so bad going there, but then when you've had a couple of beers and food, and oh, I've got like 40 yeah. minutes to get back Yeah, now. exactly. Well, then, yeah. If, and then if, you wanted, if you don't want to drive, it's an Uber, yeah. and then it's, again, it's, it's that money thing again. It's more money here yeah. and there. Yeah. So, um, um, but the vibe for me compared to to Vegas, I, I felt it's a bit more chilled. It, 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 yeah, the venue has been really good. I have to say though, it was really well organized. Like in terms of you know the, the communications, we got emails about you know when it was on, how to get there, uh, the schedule. Um, the Wi-Fi yeah. like details because yeah. your media partner you get the Wi-Fi yeah. details yeah, yeah, like yeah, yeah. everything was there we got in there's loads of people in yeah. the red t-shirts yeah. that can help yeah. get your ticket go in like and they've got and this is a real cool thing they have water towers all the way around the outside of the whole show actually did Vegas have that I don't remember it yeah I don't I, I, I do not remember yeah. that I think you're right. Yeah, I don't think. Vegas but you've got like bean bags in the middle and water on the outside, yeah. so you can get free water, which yeah. is just seriously. Yeah. Most most place most venue like Insomnia. Do you remember Insomnia? I haven't been. So not Insomnia. Yeah. Um, TwitchCon. Yeah. There was, TwitchCon. How much was it for the water? Yeah, it was ridiculous. Amount. Was it like think, four euros yeah, or something four, for that much water? For a small one like that, and they had no water water towers nope. around. Here, That's a good free. point, Paul. Actually, I didn't. I forgot about. That. And little things like that make yeah. a difference. No, absolutely. Absolutely. You don't want to be go spending four or five dollars, six dollars for, um, yeah, for water. Yeah. Every, yeah so. so, I mean, shout out to the guys who organize yeah. this because I thought they did a good no, job. I think, I think, um, yeah, I think, I think Evan, you know, one of the organizers. Yeah, um, yeah I think they did a great job. Yeah, I, yeah I, I give a shout out to the guys as well. A fantastic job. It was as soon as, you know, as soon as we knew that we were media partners, yeah. It was email after email about yeah. everything. So yeah, I, I agree with you. Yeah, ten yeah. out of t ten out of ten on that. But other than that, I think it's been <laughs> it's been two days. It's been it just seems to have just <laughs> it's crazy. It's it's nuts. Yeah. Like <laughs> it's, everything's a blur right now. Because <laughs> I say it, I say this every like conference I go to. I'm just going to stream it for like a yeah. couple of hours <laughs> and then enjoy it with everyone else. Yeah. And then next minute I know I'm looking at my my stream is like I've been streaming for like five hours. Yeah. And like I've just not done anything else. Yeah. It just really, really goes quick. Yeah. Um, so we, we've had a blast. It's been a, it's, <laughs> it's been a been great, great expo. Absolutely. Um, yeah. O Orlando, 2019 flight expo is over. Over. Yes. But I, I give it a, a big thumbs up. Actually, big two thumbs, thumbs up for me. Yeah. And, and more um, beers for us later. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> um, yeah. I'm yeah. We went to a little we went to a little brewery uh, near the resort that we're staying, and they had like uh, they had on-site brewery. And, and you could try, was it 20 different yeah, tw kinds yeah, of ale? Yeah, 20 different and beers. Some of them were just so weird and unique, but it was such a good experience. Yeah, that was great. Yeah, the, yeah again, just talking besides the flights, I think Orlando again, I know we sort of touched on it. Um, and I know we said things are a little sort of spread out, but the actual great choice for restaurants and yeah. places to no, eat. No, good places and, to eat. Uh, if you enjoy a beer like I do, great places to go drink. So I think overall, it's, Orlando has yeah. been a great venue. I've enjoyed it. Yeah, I, I think it's been good. And it's been great seeing everyone, friends, you know, new friends, old friends, meeting new people. Yeah. So it's been absolutely fantastic. It's been, it's been a blast. It's yeah. been a pleasure. And uh, 
That's it from uh, Flight Sim Expo 2019 from in Orlando. Uh, hope you enjoyed the video, guys. Uh, this is Brendan. This is Dirk Durka, a good friend. I'll leave the link to his channel It'll be in the video description. Thank you, Brian. If you want to go and give him a follow, he's a chill guy. Uh, really nice to watch. Really good streamer. Um, but yeah, that's it from us. Thank you very much, guys. See you soon. Cheers.